Hey everybody, welcome back to Off the Wall. I'm Mike. And I'm Sol. Today we're talking about another Netflix Christmas movie. Um, had, did this one fare better than than the the, the steaming load that was Lindsay Lohan's uh, Falling for Christmas? I mean, yeah. Uh, this Steve. one is, <laughs> yeah. This one is this one is called uh, 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 Christmas with You. Uh, it stars Freddie Prince Jr. and Amy. I don't have it in front of me. Um, I, I don't have her last name, but I believe in, it's pronounced Aime. I is it Aime? I have a, I have a friend whose name is Amy, and it's spelled the same. So that's where I'm getting confused. Um, but uh, Aime Garcia plays yes. Angelina. Freddie Prince Jr. plays Miguel. Uh, also starring uh, Deja Cruz, Gabriel Sloyer, and uh, Socorro Santiago. Uh, Zenzi Williams plays Mo, and there's it's a it's a slew of um, Hallmark movie esque actors who are pretty. It's, it's about the end of it, <laughs> um, but uh, it's a movie. It's about a uh, a pop star who uh, a veteran pop star who's feeling a little out of touch, a little out of place, and decides to just drive off to some random town. And uh, because the label wants her to write a new song, wants her to write a Christmas song, and and then she she meets a she meets a handsome music teacher who reignites her Christmas spirit, and they write a song together, and they fall in love. You've seen the movie, guys. <laughs> you haven't seen this one, but you've seen a version of this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Soul, what'd you think? Well, uh, this was way better than uh, the Lindsay Lohan one. Um, it already gets a few uh, bumps up in percentage points for me because it's Latino. Mm -hmm. um, I kept going, why does Aime, I was like, why does she look so familiar? Why does she look so familiar? She's in Dexter. That's why she looks so familiar. Who was she on Dexter? She was the uh, nanny for the babies. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I was she trying was... to place her too. I I thought she was this girl who was on um, Anger Management, which was this Charlie Sheen sitcom, but it wasn't her. She just looks like her. Um. Okay. Cool. So yeah, I was like, oh, that's why she looks familiar. And then obviously it's Freddie Prince Jr. He's finally playing a Latino role, so I'm very happy for him. Although the whole time. Like, the, like with the food, they're making pasuelo or like they're doing stuff with masa. And I was like, that's more Mexican, Central American. And I was like, he's Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, hey, it, yeah. it's a step in the right direction, Freddie. Like maybe next time you'll do a movie where you're playing a Puerto Rican or 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 Cuban or Dominican. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but it was cute. It was creepy at some points, but I mean, yeah. it was, it kind of showed you like, hey guys, like when they, you have a GPS in your pocket that you are walking around with all the time yeah. and people can find you very, very easily if they want to. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. That, um, that, that, that scene bugged me. I was like, oh, hey, could can we not do this? Can, can we? Because a, they're they're doing the thing, tracking down the girl <laughs> through her Instagram, and b, she's vocalizing the steps she did to do it. I was like, Ch -ch -ch no, but, <laughs> but see, you had a problem because you're like, oh, you're showing creepy people. With yeah. me, I was glad that she did it, that it was shown in the movie because so many young people put their location they're like geo tag themselves yeah. on social media while they're at that location yeah and it's so easily for someone to find you so i'm kind of glad that they did that because maybe because like with me if i ever put a location it's after i am long gone from that location <laughs> like <laughs> if you go there right now i'm not gonna be there <laughs> so yeah um, for me it was just more of like like if you're gonna if you want to point out that it's that's that's creepy that's fine don't give the step-by-step -step guide on how to do it though true, true, like true. just be like oh yeah i just tracked her down through instagram and have her go wow that's creepy and, and you leave it there it's like yeah. yeah that's that's still but to say no what i did was i did the thing and then i did this thing and she's got that i was like okay guys but it, we, but it shows how easy it is it is so. yeah 
in in a sense, I guess, like both of you and I are going creepy. Either way, it's but, creepy. <laughs> but uh, on whether they should have shown it or not, yeah. we're on different sides of that. Um, but it was a cute Christmas movie. The thing that made me the saddest is that the song was actually not very good as a musical person uh, who's done chorus and band for most of my life. Um, Could have had a better song. When, when the... Sh- because you know in all of these love stories not just christmas ones where they have to show the couple sad and not together for a while they were playing a christmas song over it and i'm like that yeah. song is way better than the one that you just performed yeah um it's i mean other than the whole okay there's there's one other creepy scene and that's when uh miguel is walking down the hall with his daughter and she's like oh i could set you up on bumble or tinder and he's like no wait, you're not on any of those apps, are you? And she goes, no. And I'm like, can, can we not imply that the 14-year-old is on a dating app, please? Please. It's a little but, weird. <laughs> this is something where these kids are on the dating yeah. apps and they are like, huh. and they have access to all of these stuff at a young age. And so in a sense, yeah, for us, yeah. You didn't have those things when yeah. we were in high school. It's a little gross, but you you remember when you're in high school, you think you're grown up. You're not. Oh, sure, but you know. Yeah. It's still just it's still just a little weird to think that. Yeah. It, it's it, weird know, to up, think, but up. guess what? It's happening. Yeah, I know. It's still weird anyway. Um yeah, <laughs> the, the the song that they end up gushing over and that by the end of the movie becomes the number one hit on all the pop charts i was like this song sucks yeah song's and really bad it's not that i may like you gave it your best yeah. you, you have one register that you say oh, yeah mm-hmm. and i think a more experienced singer might have even been able to make the same song a little better yeah because it it felt like but also like it felt like they were going for like just such generic sounding techno Mm -hmm. pop i mean like like i mean this this movie is as paint by numbers as it gets i mean it is within five minutes you you've you figured out the plot of what's going to happen um it's so but 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 it's harmless like it's yeah. it's cute you know yeah who among right. us was not was not fanning out over uh our favorite singer or band or something at that age and being told by our parents to turn the goddamn music down you goddamn kids um i also i love that in this movie uh, frank prince jr plays a music teacher and they go out of their way to hide the fact he has no musical talent whatsoever because she'll be like, Dad, can you please play the guitar for my song? Okay. But don't worry. I'll crop you out of the video so they can't see you. Right, because we don't want to see the fact that Freddie Prince Jr. can't actually play the guitar. Or <laughs> when he's playing the piano, it's all you never see his hands on the piano yeah. playing. It's always very clever to hide the fact of like, yeah, Freddie doesn't know how to play, and we don't have the budget to send him to school to learn how to play. <laughs> this is not a Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> no, this is not. This is not Joaquin Phoenix learning to play guitar for for Walk the Line. This is look, Freddie. We got a week. Um, <laughs> we, we we got the sets for a week, buddy. So just we'll shoot around it. It's fine. It's fine to worry about. Out of these two live action Netflix movies. Mm-hmm. Um, this one had better acting because Freddie yes. Prince Jr. is a way better actor. The abuela is She's great. Best part of the movie. Best part of the movie. Her, her and the tears. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. um, which it a lot of this movie even like there is things to criticize, but yeah. some of it like you just like you know when you see representation and you're like the that's my family <laughs> on <laughs> on screen. <laughs> But like uh, as, a white guy, to... as a white guy in the Midwest, I see it all the time. It's yeah. The channel. <laughs> so I was like more like a Mexican Central American version of my family, yeah. but my family nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just the fact to like the abuela watches her telenovelas, which is something my grandmother watched all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and 
But oh, he wasn't good enough, anyways. <laughs> and the, those abs aren't real. And the abuela's like, no, they're real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I love I love when a movie has just a just an edgy grandma. I love it. Mm -hmm. Where she just, you know, or cause we had it in uh, in Ms. Marvel when uh, they go to visit her grandma and, mm -hmm. and and she's like, Grandma, you shouldn't be in bed. What are you talking about? I'm coming back from a party. <laughs> <laughs> right. so you, you love to see, I love to see that because because my, yeah. my grandma's fun like that she's huge baseball nut so like my grandpa got her her own TV in the other room so she could sit in there and scream at the scream at the the, the guardians on her own and he doesn't sit there and listen to it so it's great um no and, this, and, and yeah. she like me also watches for their butts because baseball players have the best asses it's true my grandma watches baseball solely for the butts guys solely for the yeah, butts i i like the sport but then also the butts yeah no no if you want to hear my whole bit on it go to my website um <laughs> plug, 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 plug. please watch the video guys it's not getting a lot of views um it's uh it's yeah it's just it's it's the better of the two a mm -hmm. lot of that's because like whereas with i don't, I don't want to compare the two too much but like with falling for falling a christmas falling for christmas you got Lindsay lowen who's the only like talent in the movie that anybody is aware of and she's awful in it whereas like with this like freddie prince jr like has had a career for the most part has been pretty good he's giving his all like he is yeah. trying a hundred both he and i may are giving a hundred percent in this it's just they're doing the best with what they got what they got was a script mm -hmm. probably written in a month and had like two drafts and yeah and that was about it and between these two movies like comparatively like you have these like kind of rich kind of spoiled individuals but you got like that spoiled rich kid like you can't there's no redeeming qualities until yeah. she gets amnesia <laughs> and then um yeah. where uh this one like there is redeeming qualities mm -hmm. for Ame's character and she is an older pop star who like doesn't know how to do TikTok and doesn't know how to do these like newer things. And it's just like, oh, I don't have to compete with the younger versions of me. I can cheer them on as well. And yeah. so the, there seem to be like better lessons, better takeaways yeah. in, in this movie, which like that's the whole thing with like these Christmas movies is you want to have the Christmas spirit, but you also have want to have something to take away that is like good about it. What I liked about this one was was the it was less of like a, a lesson or a message and more of just like don't crucify me for saying this because I'm about to compare it to a significantly better movie. But there's elements of this like you saw in Soul, the the the, the anime, the Pixar one, mm -hmm. about being this creative type, you know, a songwriter in both of them, and being stuck in a rut. And trying to get out of that rut uh, for the sake of your music. And that's probably, I mean, it's probably the most relatable thing about this movie because who among us has not been stuck in a rut? Uh, yeah. But she kind of has to juggle that. Like, what do you do when you come to a point in your career where you're stuck and you know it? You know, you, 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 you throw a Hail Mary and drive across, <laughs> drive, the other, drive to a small town in the middle of nowhere. And write a song with a handsome middle school teacher, but just a, just a little bit outside of New York City. Yeah. I don't know if she went north and was still in New York, or went into Jersey. Who knows? I don't know. Or went into it, Pennsylvania. Who knows? I could I could I could see that being Queens. I, I could kind of believe that that was kind of the Queens area, but Queens is no, no, no. I, I don't think it was any of the boroughs. No, the boroughs. Okay. That that house did not look like the boroughs. Okay, but <laughs> either way, like just the idea of you know. Because she even asks him, like, what do you do when you're stuck? And he's like, I, I, I get the hell out of I get the hell out of the house. Mm -hmm. So like there are there are relatable things to this. All granted, neither of our leads are relatable themselves, because you know, one's a super big, famous, successful pop star who's having the most first world problems of all time. Oh no, I have to write a new pop song. Oh, my life sucks. And then you've got 
the wealthiest middle uh, high school music teacher I've ever seen because that's a nice house for a single dad on a teacher's salary, a music teacher's salary to afford for him. Is the it's first. all the abuela. It's all the abuela's all the abuela. money. Um, and then, of course, <laughs> wouldn't, this would not be a Christmas movie if there was not at least one spouse with the terrible disease of being a parent and therefore having to die off screen. Um mm -hmm. It's kind of like that real bad superhero syndrome where it's like, oh, Lots you're the dead moms in these Netflix movies. Dead moms. Well, you know, the 90s was the era of dead dads. The 90s was a lot of movies with dead dads. So the 2020s dead is the era of dead moms. It's the era of the dead moms. It's it's all about it's there's there's a there's a really bad feminism joke in there somewhere. I'm not even gonna try. Um, yeah, it's about time women had their turn dying off screen before the movie starts. Um Find me on Twitter at Mr. Mike Shea. It's look, look, the, the, the movie's fine. It's it's yeah, it's it's harmless, it's inoffensive, it's dumb and predictable. Put it's, in the background when you're cleaning because you have guests coming over for yeah. Christmas. Yeah, make them watch it. You know, while you while you be like, look, I gotta clean. You guys watch this, watch this bullshit. It's fine. Um no, it's 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 fine. It's not the worst thing I've seen this year. It won't be the worst thing I've ever seen. Even Falling for Christmas wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. It sucks, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. I feel sad for you. Why? For this year? Oh, for this year. I've seen some... Keep in mind, I've watched some crap this year. Like, I've watched some crap all the movies this year. Um, and Falling for, <laughs> Falling for Christmas is near yeah. the bottom, but it's not... I'm just remembering one of the Netflix movies. I didn't even finish it when we did the review. Oh, my remember. God. Yeah. What was but it? The Kevin Hart. Um, oh things. yeah, you made me sit through that piece of crap. I think that was the worst thing I've seen this year. I don't remember <laughs> what the it was called. Me time? Was it me time? Me time. I yeah. Think, yeah. I think that was the worst movie I've seen this year. We may have to do in best of worst of 2022. <laughs> we may have to do that. Keep an eye out for that, guys. Um, yeah. We could just do that with Netflix alone. Tell me about of it. Of all the Netflix crap we've done. Tell this me year. about it. Yeah. Man, although man from man from man from Toronto, for some reason, yeah. I don't know why that was so. Oh, there's a moment in this movie where there's some really bad editing, some really bad ADR happens in the car where uh, Mo is the, the, the perspective is on is on uh, um, um, Angela, and uh, Mo is talking to her, but the words that Mo is saying don't even a little bit line up with what her mouth is doing. I was like, oh, y'all ADR'd the hell out of this. <laughs> Uh, one of my favorite just like random nitpicks was she walked down the stairs to then walk back up the stairs at that like gala event. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That was so funny. <laughs> also, like the fact that like Mo knocks on the door and is like, oh, we're here to take you to the gala. Oh, but we're not ready yet. Bro, what time is it? Were y'all not? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Y'all weren't going to get ready because it's time to get ready. <laughs> but it was 100% to just have her have that walking down the stairs moment in a beautiful gown. Oh, yeah. No. Which, Even though she was going to walk right back. I know. Oh, in heels. The poor thing. <laughs> and that, dre that dress did not look easy to walk around in because, I mean, yeah. one sneeze and everything is on display. So, um, but strut that runway, Mama. So it's fine. Yeah. Um, but he, he, I, I thought about that too. I was like, wait, she just not, why didn't she just have to meet them up? Okay. Well, he, I would have been if it was me, because I don't like wearing heels. Uh, I, I would have been like <laughs> at the top of the stairs. You come up. Well, I, I love how they make the joke about how like Freddie Prince Jr. He's still getting ready. Oh man, and he comes out and he looks like a guy in a suit. And like, the was, tie <laughs> is not even like fully like up; it's like yeah. down a little bit. And I'm like, and I was I was waiting for a joke about like, oh, all that time and you couldn't get the tie right. Let me fix it, yeah. and and none of that. I was like, okay, all that time and you look, you look fine, dude. Okay, but then again, I'm sure it was pretty hard to get a tux that fits a guy without measuring him for it in New York that quick on a turnaround. So. What's logic? I don't know. It's I know it's a 90-minute Christmas movie on Netflix. I don't know why I'm getting so worked up about this. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it, um, so yeah. I would say it's passable. Yeah. It's watchable. Am I going to watch it again? Probably not. But, I mean, if you want to watch it, go ahead. Like, if this is a definitely have on in the background type of movie. Whereas, like, the Lindsay Lohan one. I love Lindsay Lohan. I really do. I, I would cannot recommend that. No, can't anything. recommend that. This one I could say just if you're looking, yeah, if you're, like you said, you're looking for something to throw on and not pay attention to. Because I paid attention to it because I was like, I have to I'll talk about it. I should probably know what the hell I'm watching. And who knows? Maybe I'll find some little nugget in there to be like, oh, this is, I mean, the nugget wasn't there. It was, it was, there was no nuggets in this movie. But um, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> throw it on, clean the house, move on to something else, or watch Scrooge again. Yeah, um, which I mean, Netflix, like your animated Christmas movies, like I don't know why those are just such top tier comparatively. Why you don't put oh any God. of the effort into live action because between Claws and then now Scrooge, ugh, oh, so Claws good. is so good. Claws is so good. Oh, oh, it's like rude how good that movie is. Um, so yeah, there's better, there's, there's worse Christmas movies, there's better ones, but. You know, if you guys have seen it, maybe you want to go see it for yourself, see what you can figure out. All I know is it made me think that, realize that it had been like six months since I've had Pozole, and now I want Pozole again. So I'm going to go make some Pozole this weekend, I think. You read Pozole? Anything? Uh, yeah, I've had. Yeah. I, it's like one of my favorite things like in the world. So like I'm all excited to have Pozole now. Anyway, this is now the food show. We're going to move on. Anyway, let us know what you guys think of this movie down in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see you guys again here next time on Off the Wall. Bye.